On this week's episode, we're working on the 1972 FJ40 Land Cruiser. Sponsored by TRE 4x4 BC and Strikeforce67.ca, the official Canadian home of Go Trains, Canada's professional traction tool. Welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. Today we're working on the old FJ40 here. We're going to take, remove the engine, move it ahead a couple of inches, two, three inches. We'll see how close we can get to the rad. And we're going to start mocking up the automatic transmission and the transfer case and see where we're at. I've done a bunch of measuring and whatnot already, and it's looking like the 205 and the Turbo 350 transmission is going to be just too long. So we're looking at picking up an Atlas transfer case and that's going to shorten up our whole package about eight, nine inches and that should work for us. So stick around, should be interesting. All right guys, so what we're looking at here is a Turbo 350 transmission and an NP205 transfer case, well known as one of the toughest transfer cases around. Chevy made them in the mid 70s and put them in three quarter ton, one ton trucks. The problem that I'm having is the total package length of this at around 41 inches. It's pretty long for that short wheelbase Land Cruiser. Even if I move the rear axle back and the front forward and move the engine forward, it's still really short. This total package here is gonna give me like a 16 or 17 inch drive shaft. And that's just too short for what I need to do. So a buddy of mine in Hinton, he has an Atlas transfer case. And the Atlas transfer case, what he measured was about 12 and a half inches from the flange to the rear flange. So that saves me seven or eight inches and that's quite a bit. So I'll be looking at possibly getting an Atlas transfer case for this whole setup. Now they're pretty expensive. It might take me a little while to save up for those things, but I'm thinking that's the way I'm gonna have to go. All right, so what we're looking at here is the front engine mount and it's pretty crudely done, but I think the engine mount itself will be fine to reuse, but the way he's got it welded to the frame is kind of hack and whack. And then we're gonna go back here to something I've not really seen before. He's got the rear of the engine mounted off the bell housing off of a really crude type of mount here. And uh, that's just not gonna fly. So I've definitely got some changes here to do with this crude mount. I mean, it's no big deal. I'll just cut all this stuff off pick this engine, move it ahead a little bit, tack it just for mocking up purposes, and then we'll be having to make a rear cross member. So I'm gonna have to call my buddy in Hinton and see if he can give me a measurement from the back of the engine to where the mount is on a Atlas transfer case. I'll be able to kind of hopefully make up some cross members, just hope that I make them usable. All right, so what you can see here is the old flex fan style and I've got a gap between the front of the flex fan and the rad of about three inches. And then that stub that the flex fan is mounted to has got to be about two and a half inches. Now I haven't measured none of this stuff, but I'm guessing I've got about five inches. Let's have a look. Yeah, five and a half inches roughly. That's right tight. So I think I have the option or opportunity to move the engine ahead two to three inches. If the electric fan I have mounts in tight in here, sticks out so far, you know, I'll be able to get the engine ahead. Now they do, if I remember right, back in the day they made short stubby uh, water pumps or there's an electric water pump system that you can get that might, I might be able to shorten all this up. I'll have to go look at my parts of my 400 small block that I got down in the shed and just see, it might have the short style water pump on it. So that might help me with room. You know, you should be able to get this engine quite a bit further ahead and that'll help me with rear drive shaft length and whatnot. And obviously the longer the drive shaft you have will help you with articulation. A real short little drive shaft is gonna limit you on uh, definitely on some of your articulation. All right, no time like the present to start unbolting and pull this bad boy up. Let's have at her. So 
we're looking at here is a Dana 61 ton axle out of a mid 80s Chevy truck and also a 14 bolt rear one ton full float axle out of a similar age truck. Guy had these for sale. It was about a 1200 kilometer round trip for me. I just did a few days ago to pick these up and these bad boys are gonna go into the FJ40. And what's really cool is this distance from the center of the axle to the center of the U-joint on this diff is like a half inch shorter than the Land Cruiser axles. So that's awesome. I thought this pinion length was gonna be really long and I was gonna lose distance there also, but I'm actually gaining about a half an inch, which is not much, but it's a half inch. So that's really cool. This already has the old gov lock in it. And I'm pretty sure this is just an open diff. She's plain Jane stock axle, but I picked them up at a pretty good deal and I had to make the round trip to go pick them up. So I can't wait to start putting the trusses on these bad boys and the links for four links, picking up some links and some DOM and start four linking this FJ. It's going to be an awesome little project. So if you guys are curious, yes, the rear diff, the transmission transfer case, the adapter will be for sale. The front diff will be set for sale. The suspension lift, it's probably, I haven't looked into it, but it's probably a four inch Rancho lift. That'll be for sale. If we look down here, the Rancho number 43033, maybe if a guy looks up that, we'll know what type of lift is actually on this FJ. So here's a cool item I have. It's a doubler for the stock Land Cruiser transfer case. And what it has is a NP203 front half mated with this advanced adapters plate to a stock Land Cruiser transfer case. So then it basically gives you a doubler. So I think it's four to one or something in there. I'm not quite sure, but uh, that'll be for sale also. So from all my figuring and my measuring and whatnot, it looks like I'll more than likely be selling the MP205. So if there's anyone out there that's interested in picking up the MP205, it will be for sale also. All right, so the old battery died while I was taking the transmission and transfer case off. Got a new battery in. Gonna take the clutch off and then we can put the automatic on. All right, we're gonna remove this steering box because we won't be using the old FJ40 steering box system at all. I got the Saginaw steering box uh, system from a guy in BC, he has a YouTube channel called The Car Next Door, go check it out and uh, he's got a little bit of FJ40 content on there for you and some other stuff. So I pulled my old flywheel flex plate from the back shed there. She's pretty rusty, so we're gonna do a little bit of something that I learned a long time ago. It's electrolysis. We're gonna add this solution, the arm and hammer washing soda and water and then we just want to put our positive of the battery charger onto our sacrificial piece 
and the negative on our piece that we want to get clean. And we just plug her in. You can see her doing her work now. So you need a sacrificial plate. This one here is going to get eaten away and the negative goes on the part you want the rust to get converted on. And we're going to let her eat away in there and see how she works out. Wow. That is nasty looking already. Well, this flex plate has been sitting on the ground for a number of years and it's pretty rusty. So I figured I would try the old school project, school science project, and do some electrolysis, clean up the flex plate without taking a grinder or nothing to it. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. I got time now because the motor mounts are actually shot on the FJ. So I'm gonna have to order some motor mounts before I can do much mocking up or anything like that. And I'll have to do a little more research on how the Atlas transfer case mounts up and everything so I know where to build my cross member and how to build it. And we'll go from there. So we're going to have to cut the video short. But if you guys are liking where this project's headed, make sure you subscribe, share, and like these videos. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hang in there till next Friday. See you guys later.